Hi, I'm Tom Sharkey. I'm a systems applications engineer in the Industrial Edge Motion and Robotics Group. So the demo is a pretty basic motor demo. I've got a big AC induction motor running in front. I've also got a number of props that I'm going to use to describe to you different building blocks within motor control, including encoders for feedback, full motion control platform. So the key technologies within this demo are motors and drives, uh, isolation technology, as well as position and current sensing. And I'll talk not just about the components themselves, but also the surrounding signal chain for each of those technologies. So approximately 70% of electricity used in industry today is consumed by electric motor systems. When you also couple that with the fact that one in six motors in the US is equipped with a variable speed drive, which results in increased efficiency, you can see there is quite a long way to go in terms of making more motors efficient. So motors come in all shapes and forms. Even within the demo here, I've got a three-phase AC induction motor, which would be the most common type uh, used in industry today. But I've also got a smaller BLDC motor. Um, each of these motors will have a different advantage and be used in a different situation. Motors are found in every type of application. If you take a look at conveyance systems or in uh, compressors used in AC ducts, in robotics, um, they're found in just about every stretch of industry. So motor control is most simply defined by controlling the inputs of your motor, namely the currents in the phases, to influence the output, whether that's torque or speed. Um, mostly today we're going to be talking about closed loop motor control, which incorporates sensing. So closed loop control is used very broadly. It's more specifically associated with high performance applications. If you think about a robot moving small test tubes on a conveyor belt line, you need high precision, high accuracy, but you also want that system to be very efficient um, because it's going to be operating, you know, maybe 24 seven all day around. In earlier motor systems, um, motors were connected to the grid without an inverter to control their input. And what this meant was it's, it's analogous to driving a car by keeping your foot pressed on the accelerator and using a brake to control your speed. It's highly inefficient, um, but it makes for very simple control. So a feedback loop can be explained very simply. If you imagine someone is throwing a ball to you, um, you know, you make an initial assumption about where the ball is going to land. Your eyes see the ball as it's arcing through the air. You update um, your beliefs and you reach out at the last second to catch the ball exactly where it lands. You might not think about it, but that's a complex closed loop feedback system between your eyes doing the sensing, your brain doing the processing and your hand that needs to actuate and catch the ball at the last second. It's the same way with motors. Feedback improves motor control efficiency by incorporating real world information into your control loop. In an open loop scenario where there's no sensing required, um, you have your inputs that you can influence and that is directly translated to a rough output. When you can incorporate real world elements, your control system can update its beliefs to get an ideal output every time and to get to that ideal output even faster. There are different types of closed loop control. Uh, I'm using closed loop control quite broadly. Uh, one of the more common architectures of closed loop control would be field oriented control for motors like these. And um, that is essentially, you know, controlling the flux of your motor and its specific torque to maximize the efficiency of your motor and get the best torque Per energy use. So broadly speaking, feedback consists of a number of different elements. You have your sensing modality, you have your controller or processor, and then you have your drive that's actually influencing the input of your motor. So you can use a broad variety of sensors for feedback and current sensing. Typically you use something like a shunt resistor for highest accuracy, or maybe a current transformer, which is a self-isolating sensor which can be helpful in specifically high voltage scenarios. Uh, for position sensing, you have different types of encoders. So there's optical encoders that use light to determine position. There's magnetic encoders that use a magnet mounted to the end of the motor shaft 
and use that to influence or understand the position of the motor. Uh, and typically for your velocity loop, velocity can either be um, derived from position or it can be measured specifically using something like a tachometer. So overall, incorporating feedback to your system um, benefits motor efficiency by giving you more accurate outputs, allowing you to change more quickly to dynamic conditions, uh, as well as using specifically only the energy you need for a specific torque. So one good example of um, reducing the amount of torque you might need is if you imagine an elevator. That needs to run at full torque when it's full of people, but if there is a half load of people, you can reduce the amount of torque used. If there's no people in it, you can reduce it further. So you really need to understand the real world application of your motor before deciding how much current needs to be used. Yes, so isolation is an important thing to consider when you're working with high voltage motors in a factory. Um, this is in terms of both functional isolation, so making sure that the motor can operate correctly, um, but also in terms of safety isolation, keeping the connected components and the humans around them safe from those high voltages. In the worst case scenario, when isolation is not used in your system, you can cause serious damage to the people around that system or even the connected components. But even imagining typical operation for the motor, isolation has benefits in terms of reducing the amount of noise that affects your um, circuit components. Uh, and it keeps those high voltages separate from the low voltage control of your system. So ADI isolation solutions are based on I-coupler technology. This is a form of a transformer uh, isolation. Essentially, you have uh, an isolation barrier between the high voltage and the low voltage side or the hot and cold side of your system. Um, and or in order to get data over that isolation barrier, you'll use a transformer technology. So two inductant coils on either side of the isolation barrier to transfer data. Um, Optocoupler technology is another popular solution. It uses light to get over that barrier, but iCoupler has the advantage of faster data rates as well as lower power consumption. So the key takeaway here is that motor control can be very simple, but also quite inefficient when using um, the simplest cases like open loop control. Implementing more complex control with inverters, with variable speed drives, and incorporating elements of feedback can help you make your motor solutions more accurate and more efficient using less energy for the same amount of torque or speed. So the key takeaway here is that running motors more efficiently can help global sustainability. Um, many motors deployed today are not run efficiently. And when you couple that with the fact that there are hundreds of millions of electric motors deployed, and that number is set to double by 2040, uh, you can see there's quite a large gap between what is and what could be in terms of sustainability and efficiency in motor systems. So motor control can be pretty complex. Uh, ADI seek to make that easier for the customer. We do that in a number of ways using evaluation boards, which show you not just the components themselves, but the surrounding signal chain that they operate in. We've also got a number of online resources such as technical articles for those that really want to understand the technology that they're using so that they can use it more accurately and efficiently. So thank you for watching. For more information, please visit mauser.com slash ADI or click the link in the description.